Hi, I'm Mark. This is Mark's Tech Vlogs on YouTube. And today I'm going to bring you guys a review of the Tees Fong MAS 360 degree dash cam. Now this is a dash cam from a company called Tees Fong who specialize in dash cams. And this comes from AliExpress. It does, however, ship from the UK and retails at around £100. Now, this is about average for a dash cam with the features that it's got, which includes a rear camera as well. It also comes with an included 128GB micro SD card. This is unusual because most dash cams don't come with those SD cards. At the start of this video, I want to let you know that Tees Fong have very kindly sent me this camera to review. But as with any company who reaches out to me, I'm always very clear that I will always make honest reviews. So whilst I've been given this camera, everything you hear in this video is my own opinion. So let's continue and talk about what's in the box because there is a lot in the box. Firstly, you get the dash cam itself and the front has three cameras on it. And actually for the amount of lenses on this thing, it is surprisingly compact. Next in the box, you get the rear camera as well. And then you've got all the cables and accessories. So you get the car charger cable, you get the user manual, you get a spludger for poking your cables away when you're installing it. You get some spare stick on pads for future use. You get a suction pad you can use if you don't want to stick it to your windscreen and you just want to use that instead. You get that micro SD card I talked about just now and you get a USB-C cable. There's also a few extra things bundled in there including a USB to micro SD card adapter. Tees Fong have literally thought of everything when it comes to what's in the box here. So let's move on and talk about the design. So the main camera given the amount of lenses actually has a pretty small compact design. The front of it, which is what faces outwards, has a top sticky pad to fit to your windscreen, plus the main lens. You get a spare sticky pad in the box as well, in case you need it at a later date or if you change car. The main lens comes with a removable wide angle filter plus a CPL filter. This stands for Circular Polarizer Linear Filter, and this is used to reduce glare in shots. And I'll talk more about that and show you the difference later on. The main camera can also be adjusted to get the best position for where you've put it in your car. The rear or the part that faces you on the inside has a screen and some buttons. The screen is used for viewing the live views and then the buttons are used to work through the different settings. And then the sides of the camera have some lenses on. These can be adjusted again and these are used for getting the side views of your car. This is what makes it a 360 degree camera. Although of course there will be some blind spots. The rear camera is a much smaller stick on device. And the lens on that is also adjustable so you can get the best angle depending on the slope of your windscreen and the position you've put it in. All in all, I think the design is great, it looks modern, and it's also super compact. So let's talk about specification. So all four lenses shoot in 1080p full HD video. This is great for getting high quality video, which is what you want from a dash cam. The front and rear lenses have wide dynamic night vision, which allows you to get high quality night video. The side lenses have infrared night vision, which is typically what you find on your typical video doorbell. This is still good quality, but not as good as the front and rear. The viewing angle of the camera is 140 to 170 degrees. It also has a radar sensor and parking mode built in. This means it will start recording when moving objects are detected. This is useful for picking up if someone's going to bump into your car in a supermarket and means it will pick it up beforehand. Now this feature is reliant on the camera being hardwired so it always has a kind of passive power supply. This is an option you can choose when you purchase the camera and this costs £20 more. This is also something you're going to want a professional to install so you don't mess up your car electronics. That means whilst this feature is certainly worth mentioning, it is not something that I've tried out and tested. For operating temperatures, the device can operate between minus 20 and 60 degrees Celsius. It stores video via the included memory card which goes into the device. And you can view this video by connecting the memory card to a computer or by connecting to the camera using the app and the Wi-Fi built into it. This is the TS Cam app which is available for Apple and Android. And I'll talk more about that later on. And then finally, the camera can take a memory card up to 256 gigabytes. However, that included 128 gigabyte one is gonna be perfectly sufficient. So let's talk about setup. So installation of this camera is done in two stages. The first stage is to attach the front camera. Whilst you can use a suction mount, I think the sticky pad is a better option here because it gives a more secure fitting. And this is easy to install. You simply stick it on just below your rear view mirror. One thing I do recommend is making sure you've got enough space for the cables to connect before sticking it on. From there you attach the cables and use the included spludger to poke those cables into your car interior to make sure it's a nice tidy finish. It's worth noting that the included charger doesn't include any additional USB ports. That means if you use the 12 volt charger in your car for charging things at the moment, you will lose those USB ports that are there. Now what I've got is a 12 volt to USB adapter and I used a different USB-C cable to connect this camera up. That means I've still got access to one USB port if I want it. 
Now this isn't a fault of this camera and the charger that's included because this is pretty common with dash cams. It's just worth noting if you want to keep that USB socket there is an easy workaround. Just use another USB-C cable and a 12 volt adapter. Now the rear camera also sticks on and the cable that comes with it is pretty long and I found I actually have plenty to spare. It's worth noting that I drive a Kia Picanto which is a reasonably small car but it's certainly not the smallest out there. I found the easiest way to trail this cable was along the roof of my car and this made it easy to get to the front where it plugs in as well. And of course that included spludger tool makes it really easy to poke it into your car interior. As I said just now, if you do want to use a parking monitor, you'll need to make sure you pick up the version of this that includes the hardwire kit. The link for that version is the same link as below. From there, you'll just need to power up the camera and format the memory card. You'll also want to set the date at this point and then play around with any additional settings you want to. It's also at this point that I decided to download the app and make sure I could connect. This is done by turning on the camera's Wi-Fi, heading into your phone settings and connecting to the camera's Wi-Fi network. From there, you open up the app and then you can see all of the camera video. And really, that's it. Once it's set up, it just does its thing whenever you head off on a journey. So let's talk about using it. And I've been using this for about a month and I've used it on a whole variety of drives. So I've tried to use it during day and night. I've tried to use it on motorways and also in the city as well. I also used it last weekend on a trip across to Europe where it got to go on the Eurotunnel as well. And really this camera just does its own thing. It just records when you drive and it stops when you turn off your engine. It does a really good job. There are no manual actions required at all. You just turn your car on like you normally would, it gets power and it just starts recording. And generally it seems to work in three minute cycles. This means it records three minutes of video and then starts recording another three minutes of video. This is great for keeping the file sizes reasonably small. And when it runs out of space, it will start wiping over the oldest video. Now, depending on your lens, each three minute set of video is between 125 and 190 megabytes. This means that included memory card has tons of space. That little screen on the device can show you a live view of all four lenses if you want to. You can also cycle through the different views as well. Now, personally on dash cams, I actually find these screens pretty distracting. And so you can just have it switched off. This is what I've done most of the time when I haven't been testing out that little screen, just because I find it much less distracting when I'm driving. Of course, this is personal preference, but this is a feature I look for in dash cams. So what is the video quality like from this? Hopefully, as you can see, day and night video quality is really good. And that included CPL lens does make a difference for that front lens, which is great. And let me illustrate it by just showing you now what it looks like without and then putting it back over. And the difference you're seeing here isn't massive because we've had a lot of rubbish weather in the time I've been testing this. But where you particularly notice this is with the night mode where you can see that actually there's far less glare of different lights. One of the more unique features from this camera is the GPS that's built in. This means a video you take doesn't just have a time and date, but it also has the speed you are traveling at. Generally, this seems to be pretty accurate. And of course, this is great to have were you to be in some kind of accident because you can prove that you weren't speeding, but also get an idea of the speed of the cars around you. Video in night mode also looks really good. And then I really like that it captures four different angles because this gives you a good all round view. And of course, being able to adjust the angles of those side lenses means you don't actually capture your passenger at the same time. You can also choose whether it records audio or not. So then we should talk about how you actually access the video. And I've said you access it via memory card or the app. So let's talk about those in detail. So the quickest way to access a video is to remove the memory card and plug it into your computer. This is because data transfer via USB is much quicker. However, the most convenient way, and in my opinion, the best way is to use a built-in Wi-Fi and the app. This is because you can connect directly to it in your car using your phone, and you don't have to worry about taking the memory card out and then have to be forgetting to put it back in again. The app is pretty easy to use and you can save one or more videos at a time. Now data transfer is certainly slower than USB, but I do think this is a more convenient method. It then saves into your camera roll on your phone. Now the camera also has built-in crash detection. This means if it was to detect an impact, it would automatically lock that video so it wouldn't get wiped over. Now, as with all dash cams I've reviewed, this is thankfully not something I have tested. It is, however, a feature worth noting and an essential feature of any dash cam. So all in all, what's the verdict on this dash cam from Tees Fong? And in using this for about a month, there is a lot to like about this. It comes with absolutely every accessory you could need. It's got a really nice compact design and it just works. I personally really like the Wi-Fi feature because it makes accessing video really nice and easy. And then of course it shoots really good quality video from all four lenses. And I think with the price point, especially when it includes the memory card, this camera is actually really good value. And this is certainly one I would recommend. And this is the camera I'm going to be keeping in my car. If you've got any questions about it, do stick them below and I'll answer those for you.
If you do want to pick one up, I have put a link below. That is an affiliate link. So if you do make a purchase, that will just help me out as a channel. This isn't something I get paid for. This is something I do in my spare time. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you guys again soon.